So, as requested, this is the follow-up to the previous unboxing video, which you can see right here, for the Astro C40 controller. In this video, I'll be asking the question, is this controller worth $200? Short answer, yes. What you really want to know is if it is worth buying. Hopefully, I can glean a little insight into that. To start with, this controller is extremely modular. It has swappable thumbsticks and D-pad. Would have been nice to see the buttons being swappable as well, just for other interesting configurations, but it's not really necessary as everybody pretty much is used to the buttons where they are. Given the swappable thumbsticks, you do have the options of swapping between the Xbox and the PS4 layout. As per common with these types of controllers, the thumbsticks and the D-pad are also removable from their respective modules. So you can swap out thumbsticks, you have options of various surface types as well as lengths. The triggers are pretty familiar feeling as far as what you, one would be used to in the PS4 controllers. The throw is about the same, they do feel pretty solid, so there is that. It does have trigger locks that make it short throw. And on the back, you have the UL and UR paddles. Unlike some other controllers, they are not removable, which for me is a downside because I am often a clincher when playing games. I will accidentally hit them, so I would have to turn off the buttons as opposed to just being able to remove the paddles. They are mappable, so I have the option of just unmapping them, so I don't have to worry about hitting them when I don't want to. One thing that is interesting of note is that there are only two paddles on the back and it seems to be kind of an industry standard that you would have four paddles on the back so not sure why they made that choice but either way I've never really used all four paddles so it's not a deal breaker for me on the top you have two switches one for wired and wireless connectivity not sure why they required the switching but I'm fine with that because I would just pick one and stick with it anyway and the second switch is a profile switch which you can use to switch back and forth between two program settings on the bottom is an eighth inch headphone jack, which I used for most of my gameplay, and it seemed to work pretty good. Uh, there is, of course, no connectivity to Xbox, but that being said, I'm actually not sure if there are any controllers that connect to both the Xbox and the PlayStation. Another thing to note is that when pressing the power button on the controller, it does not turn on the PlayStation. The last thing I can say about this physically is that it is quite heavy. So depending on how you play, how you hold your controller, long periods of gameplay could be wearisome. So do keep that in mind. And as far as the software is concerned, it it's nothing to write home about. It is pretty straightforward, standard button mapping, analog control, and profile selection. Pretty standard fare, and it is quite user-friendly. One thing I did notice is that if you swap the modules while you were in the software, you will have to restart the software. But of course, typically, if you're going to be swapping modules, you probably want to restart things anyway. And yes, I did try it with both thumbsticks on the left side and the software did not acknowledge that. One thing to be sure of is that you must be connected wired in order to reprogram the button. So you will have to plug it in to swap it if you normally run in wireless mode. The one thing that stood out to me the most, and this is from the standpoint of somebody who typically plays wired, is the port on the back of the controller. It's very deep and very narrow, so that limits your plug options as far as connecting. Like obviously the plug that came with it fits in the opening, but if you have uh, your own cables, because USB micro B is pretty common connector, so you have a bunch lying around. You can't just use any one lying around, and that for me is a huge letdown. Now, the one controller that I would most compare it to is the Xbox Elite controller, which I was going to argue is actually less expensive, but after doing the math, it actually isn't, because the Xbox One Elite controller does not come with a rechargeable battery and does not come with a wireless dongle. Adding those on, it actually ends up being more expensive. That being the case, I could say that this 
this controller is comparable to the Xbox One Elite. The one advantage that this controller has over all the other controllers currently on the market is the swappable modules. Now that only carries it so far because once you've gotten the modules where you want, that's it. You don't typically try to swap those around. The only case that I could think of, and I actually utilize this use case, is if you play varied game types and it's actually more advantageous to have the D-pad in one position or in the other, this is very nice to have. It's nice to be able to swap around your D-pad and your analog log modules. And of course, the right side module, uh, the, the fact that it's movable, I am assuming is more for a consistency standpoint than it is a flexibility standpoint. Either way, it, it is unmoving. If you are the type of gamer that would find value in being able to hot swap your modules, being able to move your D-pad into the appropriate location when you need it, this is the controller for you. I definitely recommend getting this. For anyone else, there are other controllers on the market that may be more suitable for you. The main selling point being the swappable modules I don't think is a strong enough selling point to put this controller above the rest. It is a strong contender, but it is not a leader. So if you're thinking to yourself, should I get this controller? Ask yourself two questions. Do I want to spend $200 for a high-end controller? And do I need to regularly change out my D-pad and analog? If you answered yes to both those questions, this is the controller for you. Otherwise, probably not so much. I thank you guys for tuning in to this little controller review. Don't really do reviews on this channel, but there was a bit of a request for it after the unboxing, so we thought we would do it. If people seem to like the review, we might do some more. So if you did like this, let me know. We might do some more. And if you didn't, definitely let me know so we don't do more. If you're so inclined, do subscribe and hit that bell for notifications on all the latest video releases and future streams. Once again, I thank you all for tuning in. And until then, I will see you then.